everybody. Welcome to Nana's Kitchen with Tina. Today I'm going to be making, um, I'm going to be mixing two of our desserts together to make this incredible butter tart bar. So I'm going to be using the shortbread cookie mix and all of our products, including desserts, are gluten free. So that's a bonus. So, and then I'm going to top it off with our True North butter tart mix. So just to tell you how it, what it says on the instructions. It says, using a stand mixer with a paddle attachment or a hand mixer. Now I do custom cakes and sweets, so I have a separate kitchen downstairs with all of my baking stuff, including my stand mixer. So up, upstairs in my upstairs kitchen, my everyday kitchen, I have just the hand mixer. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with that because not everybody has um, a stand mixer. Um, so, or use a hand mixer on medium speed Beat mix with half a cup of softened unsalted butter, so I have that here, um, and one tablespoon of water for two to three minutes or until a soft uniform dough forms. Scoop or roll dough into 15 balls, about one heaping tablespoon each. Arrange on a lined sheet pan, spacing one inch apart, gently press to flatten slightly. Uh, slightly. Sprinkle with sea salt if desired and bake at 375 degrees preheated oven for 14 to 16 minutes or until edges are light golden. Let cool on a pan, let cool on the pan completely. You can swap out butter for unsalted margarine, unsalted margarine or vegan butter sticks. Now I'm, since I'm going to be doing the, Mom, the what are you doing? I am making this is my son, John Luca. Hey. <laughs> um, I'm going to be making shortbread cookie bottoms in our oh, perfect yeah. petite pan. And then I'm gonna put the butter tart filling that normally goes in a tart on top. And I'm gonna make little butter shortbread butter tart farts. I'll try it after. You will? You're gonna try it? You're gonna be our taste tester? Yeah. Also two cats were at the second stair step. Because they want to see what's down at the bottom. Okay, so these are my Pro Prep scissors. They are incredible. I cut chicken wings and uh, like, like butter. So I am going to cut it off at the bottom. And the reason why I do that is because the English instructions are at the top. And I don't, uh, I can read French. I don't know what I'm saying though. So we're going to go with this. And also, also, you can have it standing here, nice, nice, and there I can read the back of the package if I need to refer to it, because for me, I always seem to re need to refer to the package a dozen times. I don't know why. So, using a stand mixer, with the ha uh, a hand mixer, sorry, you're, I'm going to beat the mix with half a cup of softened butter. So let's open this up. And it has all the measures on the, on the um, one side of the wrapper, which is great. So a quarter, quarter, half, and a, and a cup. So obviously I'm going to go with the, with the two, one quarter. That's stuck in my nail. Okay. There, this is our Pro Prep Chef Knife. It's a ceramic and it comes in a sleeve for protection when you store it. And it's, super, it's a super sharp knife, but it's also super um, soft. So you don't want to cut anything hard with it. So you don't want to smash a garlic clove with it. You'll probably snap the blade in half. And uh, you don't want to separate hamburger, frozen hamburger patties true story I did that with my with the paring knife and because I was too lazy just to turn around and grab another knife and I um, chipped the tip luckily it was only the tip so I it's still I can still use it I didn't break it in half so I also like to take a spatula that's the other thing this was what my Nana instilled in me. This is like 
her weapon of choice in the kitchen was her spatula because she she scraped up every last bit. Look at that. I probably shouldn't take more than that because then that would be more than half a cup. So let's put that there and wrap it up all nice and neat. It's funny. I have cats and I have this one cat. She's like the scavenger of the family. One time I had to do some baking up here and I left some butter out to, um, to soften overnight. Well, not overnight. I let it soften on the counter and came to it later on and saw this little hole in my butter and it was like, it was scooped. She licked it. She ate the butter. So I can't leave butter out on the counter here and I wipe everything down with my Norwex cloth. So I make sure I kill any germs. Well, I gotta turn my power bar on first. That would help, right? tablespoon of water so this is our hold on our four in one spice spoon which fits in all of our jars you don't need to fight with the regular tablespoon the round one to try to get your there we go that's better I'll wait till this is done so I can explain what I'm saying you don't need to fight with your, you know, the regular tablespoons that are round and they don't fit in the jar and then you got to fight with them and you got to pour your spice, try to pour your spice in the spoon, but then it ends up all over the counter or you pour too much into your your mixture so these they're great because they like I said they fit in all of our jars and they're all on one one utensil one one tablespoon teaspoon half a teaspoon and there's a line there for a quarter teaspoon so I love them and you need to have a minimum two one for wet one for dry they're amazing you can probably even have a few more. So, this is our, our three-in-one spatula, and it's three-in-one because it kind of has three functions. It uh, scoops because it's got the little, it's got the little concave surface, stirs and scrapes. And I love the little point on it because it gets right in the grooves. Like if you ever want to get the lot, every little last, morsel of or drop of a dressing or something you can get right in the grooves of the jar like mayonnaise for example you can get right in the grooves and get every little last bit nothing goes to waste So I'm just going to give it another quick, and so what I'm going to do, let's move this away, is I'm going to put it in our perfect petite. Oh, I guess I should have, I need this. Now, our spice spoon 
is perfect because it fits right in. Oops. Actually, right in our perfect petite. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll show you this just before I stick it in the oven. There's no need for me to sit here and bore you with me doing that. So one second. So I decided being that I bake and I decorate cakes and whatnot, I have a lot of piping bags and whatnot. Um, I thought that it would be easier for me to put these in the perfect petites using a piping bag. So have a look. So I have the one that's got the little, it's like a plug almost. And when you squeeze, then the batter comes out. So I set that up. I put it in a glass so that it's holding it for me and I can dump my batter or in this case, kind of like the dough. So I'm just going to squeeze a bit. Oh, I broke the bag. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take a quick little break and I'm going to fix this because I'm going to use a new bag. And we're back. <laughs> you know what? I think it's important to show people bloopers because I don't want everybody to think that I'm, I'm perfect. I'm not. And that's also what discourages people from maybe taking a chance and doing a business like this. I mean, I joined this business because I figured I have to cook anyways for my family and why not make a paycheck as I'm doing it. So take two. So you got to see what I did there also with the, with the batter and whatnot. So hopefully we don't have the same problem with this one. It is kind of stiff, so. And uh, prior to doing what I'm doing now, I practiced massage therapy for like 20 years and I did deep tissue massage. So. This actually is hurting me just a little bit. Oh, this one might go too. Let's, you know what? If I warm it up a bit, my hands, sometimes that works. I'm actually, you know what? Instead of trying to squeeze it all at once, I just do a bit instead of what I mean is instead of blump, plumping it all down at the bottom and doing it all at once, trying to squeeze the whole bag, I'll just do a bit at a time. Oop. Yeah, we got we got a hole in the bag. These bags aren't very good. I'm gonna have to talk to McCall's. <laughs> These are McCall's bags, piping bags. It's okay. They're disposable, so this will be in the garbage after. Hold on, let's put my thumb there. And it does get better when you when you have the heat from your hands. Because it's butter, right? So and I use I have um a spatula that the handle broke, so I kept it because what I do is I take whether I'm doing icing or something like this, I take it and I push, I scrape the bag so I, I get as much of it as possible out. Where's the... And we're almost done here. And then I'm going to flatten it a bit with the spatula or the spice spoon. Twist the bag too to help you push it down. Can I get one more? Let's see if I can get one more out of this. There we go. Okay, good enough. So let's see if I can get the 
this. This one, this was the one that I tried to, tried to scoop in. I'm gonna use a little bit of water just so that I can maybe have it not stick to the back of the spoon. This one's probably not gonna turn out so well. Although it should expand, melt a little bit and expand in the um, in the pan. So this is my first time making this trial and error. The first time, then you get to learn the little tricks and whatnot, what works, what doesn't. So this is why I'm doing it for you guys first, and then I can kind of help you troubleshoot if we need but you don't need to do this you can buy the pre the pre-made um, tart little tartlet um, shells save yourself some time but I like to make my life difficult sometimes <laughs> No, I heard this, this was an amazing, an amazing pairing. So I'm, I'm trying this. I love shortbread. Okay, we're gonna leave. I'm gonna see what happens. We're gonna put this on here. I gotta time it for eight minutes. So let's put the timer on. for the butter tarts. So what it says to do, whisk, mix with one quarter cup each of warm water and unsalted butter. Let's get the unsalted butter in here first. One quarter, it says. So we're going to cut this in half because that's the half mark. that I've dirtied. One quarter each. I need a quarter cup of warm water. So this is our one cup prep bowl. It comes in a set of four with a silicone lid. It's got the measure of a cup and liters, uh, milliliters on either side. Go. Now this does have coconut in it. So anybody who is allergic to coconut can't have it. I'm sorry. It's got the uh, coconut palm sugar. Get that out of the 
swing. One down. do the egg after. So it says to whisk in one egg if you want it to be thicker. Um, I use, typically you want to put um, so an egg that's been at room temperature. So if you've taken an egg right out of the fridge and you want it to warm up quickly, then you just put it in a, in a cup or a bowl of uh, warm water. So. I'm just going to give it a scrape. And the reason why, sorry, the reason why you want a room temperature egg, especially when you're dealing with butter, if you've brought butter to room temperature and it's soft, and then you go and you throw a cold egg in it, it's gonna get hard again. I'm actually going to, I'm going to use this again and I'm going to throw this bag out. So I'm just going to cut it and take this out. my filling ready. So you want to fold the top of the bag over because you want some of it clean. So there we go. Probably putting too much in. <laughs> I'm impatient. I'm very impatient. So that's going to come out in two minutes. Oh, that's good. And so the shortbreads, the directions are that it says to bake for 14 to 16 minutes. But when you're doing something like this, you want to bake it for half the amount of time and then bake it for the rest. So like, for example, the butter tarts, it, after you mix everything, it says bake at 375, the same temperature, um, 
for 10 to 12 minutes or until filling is lightly browned and bubbling. Filling will thicken as it cools, cool completely before serving. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to let it cool a bit and then I'm going to stick the pan in the freezer because it'll make um, popping them out of the perfect teeth pan uh, so much easier. So that's 30 more seconds and it's coming out. Let me just get rid of all this because I'm going to put it on here. I love these Marwitz cloth. They're, they are amazing. The reason why I'm doing that is I'm, it's still soft, so I'm trying, <gasps> uh, where is my, my spatula? Oh, there it is. It was hiding. Okay. I was trying to get it to flatten a bit more. Well, I guess I could just do that. Flatten it a bit. put a little bit too much in some of them. Actually, I want to try this. This is better. This is much better. should hurry up. Yeah, much easier to flatten these after they've been in the oven for a bit than to try and fiddle with them as you're putting them in. So this is almost done. Okay, again, twist the bag so it doesn't come pouring, shooting out the top. I always get caught. Hold on, there we go. Oh, I don't have enough. I might have put too much in some of these. I may not have enough. But that's okay. We can find them plain too. So hold on. I'm just going to scrape this so I get as much as I can out of this. So we're going to have two without. That's okay. So it's going to go in for another eight minutes. That's the remainder of the shortbread time. And there we have it. Just something really, really quick I want to point out to you. Forgive me for going off camera. I just thought of this now. In our catalog, whether you view the digital version or hand hard copy, you want to turn to page three because page three 
is all about um, what is not in our products. Um, and this list here on this side, so on the right side of the page, it's a list of ingredients. It's called our never ever list. So these are all the ingredients that are in the typical grocery store um, products. Like the middle aisle of the grocery store, the aisles in the middle, sorry, of the grocery store are basically we're the healthier version of it. So all these ingredients that you're gonna see in here is typically what you would find in those, those products. At the bottom here is a little legend, colored dots, and it tells you beside each product, which of these dots are um, contained in those products. For example, the orange is non-GMO, the green is kosher, the blue is low sodium, and the blue circle, hollow circle, is no sodium, and the green is vegan. And then also to make it easier for you, if you wanted to check out, find a particular product and rather than sifting through the whole catalog, you go through the back cover and last page and everything is in alphabetical order and you will like, so the ingredients, cookware, meal kits, Epic Life program, collections, books, and meal plans. And in the ingredients, section anything that has a green dot is going to be vegan or plant-based so if you want to find something that's vegan or plant-based then everything is there for you and it's got the page it also tells you how much it costs in Canadian and the US and what page it's on so I love this catalog because everything we even have recipes so if you're if you're viewing the digital version of this you'll see some of the items or some of the food it'll be labeled by A B C D E or whatever and it'll tell you a classy cucumber bites. You can click on that, it'll take you to the recipe and it'll also have at the bottom of the recipe, shop this recipe. So it's really, really handy, really, really greatly. Like it's, I love the way it's laid out online and how you can find things very easily. And if you ever have any um, concerns about what may be in a particular product, like even though you can, expand the nutritional uh, tab it'll tell you what is in the product if you want to find out exactly like if there's a particular ingredient that you cannot have and you want me to double triple check or whatever I can go into our back office and check my ingredients list to let you know what is not in the product so this is gonna be another five minutes before they come out um, and then I gotta have to let them cool and stick them in the freezer so when that's uh, when that's done and they're ready to be shown, I will pop them out for you and you can see what they're like. So thank you for watching and I'll be back soon.